Well, he has already sailed solo right around the world. Now Bert Terhart is setting off on another adventure, a journey by canoe and foot, I assume, across Canada, along its rivers, its lakes and streams. And he'll be following the ancient roots of Indigenous peoples and the early explorers and the cartographers. And we have caught Bert just before <laughs> his departure from the mouth of the Fraser River in the next day or so. And his destination is the other coast over to New Brunswick. Bert, welcome. It's, it's great to see you. And, and how are you feeling right about now? Oh uh, well, I have to say I'm. I'm well. Firstly, it's 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 great to talk to you. It's uh, I'm I'm of course really excited about going, and I'm really excited about sharing parts of the of the journey. But I have to admit, I'm I'm a little tired because I've been going kind of flat out. There's, it's very hard to get off the dock, whether you're going to sail around the world or jump into a canoe. So that sometimes the hardest part is actually the the uh, the preparation and the leaving. So if I look a little tired, it's because I'm a little tired. <laughs> Wondering what you might leave behind, right? But uh, yes, yeah. could you give us a sense of what's driving you? What, why such a journey? Uh, well, there's 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 a number of whys, I suppose, and there's there's a lot of context under which you could you could ask why. So it's it's a very it's it's a it's almost a, a, an I won't say impossible question to answer, but it's a very deep question to answer because you could sort of start down a uh, it's stuck on the a very personal rabbit hole, I suppose. But um, I, I guess there's fundamentally, uh, I'm a very proud Canadian, and I've I've always felt that uh, um, I've always wanted to see Canada in its in, in a very pure form, and I wanted to experience the land, the rivers, and the lakes um, in the way that the earliest Canadians experienced them. And uh, one of the ways to do that, of course, I felt anyway, was to do it. Uh, on foot and by canoe, the same way that uh, um, Indigenous peoples have been have been traveling across this country for millennia, and certainly, of course, and like you mentioned, the ways that early explorers and uh, cartographers did. So, and they're usually I'm, left out of the story, aren't they? Yes, that's that's right. So, I that's and I, I think that's a that's a tremendous disservice to those to those people. So, I'm I'm hoping. Um, one of the whys of this trip is to is to sort of bring some attention to the uh, to the incredible role that uh, Indigenous peoples played in in literally putting Canada on the map. And it's uh, as you as you mentioned, it's not just it's not just under um, served; it's underappreciated by by a very large measure. Kainani is is the name of the canoe, and and what's the meaning behind that? Uh, well, Kainani is a, it's a Polynesian phrase that means uh, synergy or harmony between wind and wave. So I'm, I'm a sailor, I guess, first and foremost, I suppose. So, and every sailor has to name their ship. So I had to name the ship. So the, the ship, the vessel is named uh, Kainani, which, uh, uh, which I thought was, was beautiful and appropriate. And I take it this is a canoe that, is it collapsible to, to help you get from A to B <laughs> between the waterways? No, sadly, it's not collapsible but I, I did get the lightest canoe I could get my hands on that that I that I thought could actually make the trip so uh, um, yeah there's uh, I'll, and I will say that there are some people who've done some extraordinary voyaging or exploring through Canada on inflatable canoes and rafts so this the, uh, something as solid as this Kevlar epoxy thing I have is, is, is a luxury I suppose. We're going to take a look at the map of your route. Can you give us a sense of uh, what you're connecting? Well, um, because I want to get all the way to the Atlantic seaboard, I, I have to leave very early in the year here on the West Coast. So um, that means I'm going to have to patch together some of the uh, some of the earliest routes used by um, cartographers uh, to get to get across Canada. So this is a the route you're seeing here is, is a compendium, certainly in the West. It's a compendium of uh, Fraser's routes, Thompson, uh, Fiddler, Haas, of course. Um, the, the, you know, Champlain, of course, he was more out to the uh, out in East, but it's, it's a compendium of, uh, of Northwest um, company routes, Hudson's Bay routes. And of course, um, every single one of them is, uh, is a highway that was used uh, for generations by thousands of, of, of indigenous explorers and, and traders and, and, and travelers. So it is, it, the, the road that you see here, this little black squiggle is basically, um, it's, a, it's, it's an early explorer slash First Nations superhighway across Canada. So uh, it's, it's pretty exciting to be traveling in the footsteps of, of, of so many 
um, so many household names, but to me, it's even more meaningful to be traveling in the footsteps of, of literally thousands of people, early Canadians, um, earliest Canadians and First Nations people who, who um, not just lived on the land, but, but thrived on it. So I'm hoping to get some insight in, into, their, into their relationships uh, with the land that they lived and loved on. Absolutely. And you're staying true to the time as well, aren't you? In that uh, you, you set some restrictions for you. Uh, when, when it comes to, <laughs> you, you won't have a satellite uh, GPS to guide you. How, how are you going to find, find your way? Well, um, well, first and foremost, I'm, I'm doing the whole trip um, by myself. So I, I, have to, I have to power me across the whole country. Uh, so that means it's, I'm either paddling or walking or pulling. Um, I'm, I'm sleeping in the tent the, the whole way. So I'm, there's, there's no hotels, you know, there's nothing like that. And um, in terms of navigation, I've, I've, uh, well, I, I know one of the ways that you can truly experience, or you can relive some of the experience, some of the experiences of the early explorers, is to step out into the woods without any any kind of uh, location finding and just get lost. Because getting lost is, a, you know, can be a very trying experience or exercise. So um, I'm using very what we would consider to be primitive navigation tools. So um, that's a sextant tables, this funny circular thing is actually a slide rule, which is a pretty sophisticated instrument. Um, but it means I don't have to carry log tables and a pen and paper, and of course a compass. Um, so I'm using the same kind of tools that Thompson would have used or Mackenzie or Fiddler or Turner or, uh, or um, Champlain or, Le, or Lavrandre, Lewis and Clark, the list goes on and on. As it turns out, all of Canada was mapped with a sextant. And, it, and the sextant is exactly the same tool that say Cook or Bly or Vancouver used to, to sail around the world. It's the only tool I used to sail around the world. So I've decided that I would, I would um, navigate with the same kinds of tools that, and technologies that were available to someone like uh, you know, Mackenzie or Thompson. Using the and, night sky and, and the sun to, to guide you. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Now, having, having said that, you know, paddling on the North Saskatchewan River through downtown Edmonton, you know, it's pretty hard at that point to not know where you are. But um, one of the things that's, that's amazing about those early cartographers is how unbelievably accurate their work was. It was astounding the, uh, how incredibly competent um, they were. And the work that they produced stood as the you know as as the best maps for example for for almost you know, sixty for almost six or seven decades. Let's look at a and, few of those maps. We have some right here, in fact, from sure. from your web page. Uh, how far back does this one go? Well, this is the early eighteenth century, so this gives you some idea of what uh, this gives you some idea of what um, someone like uh, someone like Samuel Hearn was was presented with when when he was you know trying to get down the Coppermine River. So this is a very distorted view of what of what North America looks like but there's things there that uh, that we would recognize so there's Newfoundland there's the Great Lakes there's of course Hudson Bay and James Bay um, there's uh, uh, the the uh, there, there, there's Lake Athabasca and then of course there's this giant sort of no man's land terra where, where, incognita yeah, of yeah. That. <laughs> so so there so there be monsters as it were or there be dragons and then there's there's just and, and a lot of the maps to be perfectly frank and this one included is just there's just there's just pure fantasy so they were just drawing things as they as as they thought they as as they wanted them to be but i think the next um, map is is a little more accurate in the sense that uh, more science was applied to it well this is this is david thompson's map so this this map was produced as part of uh, David Thompson's 28 years of mapping in, in, in Canada and the northern and northern United States. And this map is unbelievably accurate given uh, given the, the, the time in which it was it was made and how it was made. So the, the difference in, in, in a very like the, the, the difference between the, the first map and the second map is, is less than a generation. It's only, you know, it's it's about 60 years. And uh, the, the work that went into this, this map that we're seeing here and, and, and the result of, of those 28 years is, a, is an astounding piece of, of science and, and technology. And underpinning this is, uh, underpinning Thompson's successes and this map are, are the roles that indigenous peoples played as, as his partner, as his guide, as his, as his political emissary, as his bodyguard, literally in some cases. So what we're looking at now would not have been possible had it not been for the uh, um, for the um, um, 
roles that indigenous peoples played in, in helping David Thompson, you know, produce something like this. So this is literally Canada as we know it. And uh, um, this was done with a sextant. It's done with, with the same tools that, that, that I was using. Um, but it was unbelievably laborious, painstaking, and, and the, the amount of dedication and skill um, that went into this was is is mind numbing. I don't think it's anything that that we could sort of even appreciate. But. Yes, and that we're looking at Western Canada and the Rocky Mountains there yeah. uh, in in the middle, and uh, it, we're getting close to to closing this conversation. But you're carrying a petition with you that relates to renaming part of that geography that Indigenous people helped the mm -hmm. uh, European explorers uh, cross. Tell us about that. Well, Huss Pass um, is named after by a Hudson is named after a Hudson's Bay trader by the name of Joseph Huss, uh, who was born in, in England and actually ended up uh, uh, returned to England and then uh, you know passed away there. Never never spent much, really spent much time in Canada, although he had a tremendous impact. Um, uh, it, it, w w while he was here, he actually wrote a, uh, the, the the definitive Cree um, dictionary. So he was a he was a linguistic and, and not so much of of, of an explorer. But he was the second European across um, uh, Haas Pass. And Haas Pass had been used for literally thousands of years as one of the primary routes for um, peoples, living, uh, peoples living on the western slopes of the Rockies, uh, linking them to the, to the bison hunting grounds on the eastern slopes of the Rockies. So it had been used, it was literally a highway. It had been used for, for thousands of years by First Nations people. And it was, uh, it was Thompson's uh, Kootenai guides who, who helped him um, over Haas Pass and into the Columbia, and eventually into the Columbia, into the Columbia River Valley, and Joseph Haas, um, Haas was being sent by the Hudson's Bay Company to do, to, to to reconnoiter the same valley. But um, I think that uh, I I I'm hoping to 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 raise enough signatures to to petition the BC government um, with, of course, in consultation with First Nations peoples, because this is not you know I'm just using this as a as a tool. And to to lend some 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 weight and support to their argument to have uh, a, a geographical place that's already a um, a national landmark in Canada renamed to to reflect its its importance to Indigenous peoples um, here in in British Columbia and in and in Alberta. So I'm I'm very excited about that, and I'm I'm hoping to to, to gain a bit of traction. I, I would very much like to see um, that that particular place because of its uh, because of its importance to First Nations peoples for. For literally thousands of years, I like to see that uh, renamed. Jo Joseph uh, Hasse has a river and a giant mountain named after him. So hopefully, uh, uh -huh. hopefully we're we're not uh, um, we're not being disrespectful. So well, we we will send uh, people viewing this to your web page. We'll include that at the end of our discussion, and, and they can find out more about the petition of, and they can follow you on your journey. Uh, mm -hmm. There's actually an app for that, isn't there? And we're yeah. looking at uh, what that is right now, so you can. And, and I see you have a little sailboat right at the mouth of the Fraser River there. Yeah, yeah. Ready so for departure. So what what there'll be is those there'll, there'll be live satellite tracking. So you can actually follow my my track uh, twenty four seven all the way across uh, um, all the way across the country. You know, knock on knock on wood, scratch a, scratch a stay and turn three times, as the sailor would say. <laughs> so uh, um, yeah, there, there'll be. Um, uh, I'll be updating uh, my my progress daily, and you know, with with pictures and some commentary. And uh, and if you're interested, you can actually follow along. You know, literally, in, it literally, or I should say, you know, digitally in in, in my footsteps. Yeah. Bert, this is so exciting, and thank you for giving us time uh, on your last day before you uh, begin this incredible journey. <laughs> and we wish you well. We'll stay in touch, and hope that people watching this will as well. Well, Mark, it's been a real it's been a real pleasure, and I want to thank you for the for, for the tremendous uh, support I've 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 received uh, already, and um, uh, I look forward to speaking with you again. Cheers. Cheers.